Hi, this is Martin Brennan from Imagineer Systems, and welcome to another in the Quick Shot series where we try and distill as much information as possible in the shortest amount of time. Today we're going to be talking about the surface, probably the most flexible and misunderstood part of the Mocus toolset. The surface controls not just what your output will be, but can also represent your tracking data as you're tracking, and can also control the track itself if you so choose. So the best way to explain this is to actually start a track and take you through the process. So I'm going to draw a spline here on the road, which is a nice flat plane to work with. And we're just going to pull that out a little bit to get as much detail as possible. And the first thing we want to do now is turn on our surface, the thing that we're talking about today. Our surface is our little blue icon up here in the view control panel, so we just press that. And up it comes, this blue rectangle sitting on our screen now. This blue rectangle will always be a rectangle to begin with. It won't be skewed in any way until we start playing around with it. Now in the beginning we can either choose to manipulate the surface to make it look like it's sitting on the plane that we're tracking, or we can just leave it alone and go ahead and track and then manipulate it afterwards. It doesn't matter which way you do it, but in general we recommend that you manipulate the surface first so that you can follow along with the tracking and see how it's going. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to just move my surface into position, just so it looks like it's sitting on this road. But we can do this at any point. We can do it at the beginning, we can do it during our tracking, so we can stop the track and move our spline and surface around. And you can do it at the end if you need to do any tweaking. But it doesn't matter when you do it, because this surface is completely independent of the tracking data. It is a child of our tracking data, but we can continue to move it around as much as we like, and it won't affect the tracking data. This is one of the very important concepts to understand about the surface, is that it only represents the tracking data, it is not physically the tracking data itself. There is one exception to this, and we'll get into that later. So let's just to begin our track, I'm going to turn on perspective, and start moving forwards. Okay, so I just stopped the recording briefly to do the track there, and we can see now that we've got a little bit of tracking data. You can see that the surface and the spline are moving along with the tracking data, so they're locking down to our road. However, even though I've got this surface set in one position, I can still now move it around. So if I wanted to actually make it face more of this road coming in here, we could do that by just moving it around, like so. And then when I move, you'll see that that surface is now moving in that direction, still relative to the tracking data. This is again because the surface has nothing to do with the tracking data, it is literally just a representation of that tracking data because it's a child linked to it. The same goes for the spline. The spline is a little bit different in that it's the thing that's searching for information for the tracking data, but it is also just a child of the tracking data. So when I move the surface, I, you can see here I'm not affecting the spline in any way, and if I move the spline, I'm not affecting the surface in any way. I'm also not affecting the tracking data in any way when I move this spline around because it's just searching for information. So these are the two most important things to know about the spline and the surface. They are children of the tracking data and we can move them about and not affect the tracking data. The only way we affect the tracking data when moving the spline is giving it a new place to search, so I could move it over here and on the same plane, and it would still track correctly because it's tracking all on the same plane. Or I could move the surface just to get a better visual representation, but this won't affect the tracking data, it'll just show us how the tracking is going. The surface isn't just a visual aid, however, it is actually the thing that you use to export out your information. So the four corners of this surface represent a corner pin if we export out to something like After Effects or Nuke or Final Cut. And if you want to do a transform, it will take the four corners of the surface and generate a center point based on that information. So where you position your surface in the shot is very important because the surface actually represents the data once you come to export. Okay, so now that we've talked about how the surface only represents the data and doesn't control it, I'm going to show you a situation where that's a complete and utter lie. Here we have a nice little graveyard scene, and I'm going to track one of the stones using a similar technique. So I'm going to draw my spline, as usual, just around this gravestone. And I'm also going to turn on my surface and align it to the stone. So I'm going to just put it on the corners.
like that. And then I'm going to come down to my motion panel and turn on manual track. What manual track does is it turns your surface into a track controller. Now when I track forwards, you'll see that it tracks as normal as you would see in an automated track, but you can see some keyframes now being generated as we go. This is because the tracking data is being turned into manual keys that you can manipulate. So if I was to move a little bit further down into this footage uh, along the timeline, I can then move my surface manually just as before, but this time when I move the surface I actually generate a keyframe which is affecting our tracking data. This is really useful when you've got an object that you can no longer track in the scene and you have to fill some gaps where it is completely untrackable. You can switch to manual track and then go ahead and tweak your surface to make sure that it aligns correctly with the rest of the frames. So that was a quick overview of how to use the Surface when tracking in Mocha AE and Mocha Pro. If you have any questions about the manual tracking or even a just track using the Surface, please check out our website at ImagineerSystems.com where we have more in-depth tutorials on those very subjects. This has been Martin Brennand for Imagineer Systems.